We're working with these state legislators to make sure they have all of the information they need to draft the bills. In some cases, we actually draft them for them, or we have a sentinel on our behalf give them the model legislation so it has that grassroots, you know, from the bottom up uh, type of vibe. And we are going to take the fierce fire that is in every single one of our bellies to right the wrongs of November, to right the, right the wrongs of the mistreatment against these men and move it into other states. Hi again, everyone. It's five o'clock in New York. That right there was Jessica Anderson. She is the executive director of Heritage Action for America. It's the sister organization of conservative think tank, the Heritage Foundation. That footage was obtained by a watchdog group called Documented and then shared with Mother Jones. And it shows Heritage Action actually bragging to its donors on camera in a presentation last month about how they are creating the voter suppression laws we're now seeing enacted by Republican legislatures all across the country. As of right now, 11 states have passed restrictive voting laws and dozens more have measures under consideration. Mother, Mother Jones goes on to explain Heritage Action's concerted effort this way, quote, it's no coincidence that so many GOP controlled states are rushing to pass similar pieces of legislation in in such a short period of time. Republican legislators claim they're tightening up election procedures to address unfounded concerns about fraud in the 2020 election. But what's really behind this effort is a group of conservative Washington insiders who've been pushing these same kinds of voting restrictions for decades with the explicit aim of helping Republicans win elections. The difference now is that Trump's baseless claims about 2020 have given them the ammunition to get the bills passed. And the conservative movement led by Heritage is making an unprecedented investment to get them over the finish line. Heritage Action is a dark money group, which means it doesn't disclose its donors. We do know the Koch brothers are among them. Anderson responded to Mother Jones with a statement. She said this, quote, we're proud of our work at the national level and in states across this country to promote common sense reforms that make it easier to vote and harder to cheat. We've been transparent about our plans and public with our policy recommendations, and we won't be intimidated by the left smear campaign and cancel culture. During her presentation, though, Anderson spoke about guarding against legal challenges and mentioned someone who will be familiar to all of you. Here she is describing Heritage's operation in Georgia. Then we provided testimony, expert witnesses, analysis, and, and actually how to draft these bills so that they were legally tight. So Mark Elias, if you know that name from the progressive left, he's like their legal pit, pit bull. He goes after all of this with lawsuits so that Mark Elias can't find any holes in the legislation. But Mark Elias did. Mark Elias sued Georgia over its law in March and has mounted lawsuits against other states as well. Elias told Mother Jones, quote, the Georgia law violates both the Voting Rights Act and the U.S. Constitution. Heritage action claiming that this is legally tight is like hearing from the Titanic shipbuilders about how much confidence they have in its maiden voyage. This law is based on a big lie, denies black, brown and young voters of their rights and will be struck down in court. In a brand new piece from Democracy Docket, Elias lays out the danger of the GOP's anti-democratic efforts. Quote, the transformation of the big lie from a political ideology to a basis for state action is a critical one for a society, especially a democracy, because once it infects our laws and official policies, it creates real harm to the public. A law that calls an arsonist a firefighter doesn't just result in confusion, it threatens public safety. The truth is that we are almost certainly closer to the beginning than the end of the damage at the big lie. Well, Rick, we begin this hour with the author of that piece, the aforementioned legal pit bull of the Democratic Party in the fight against the Republican war on voting rights. Mark Elias, voting rights attorney and founder of the Democracy Docket. We're so happy to get to talk to you. We know how busy you are. And thank you for spending some time with us today. Thanks for having me back. I'm happy to be here. I want to ask you, I, I said on this show once that from my time um, in the Republican Party, I was sure that someone had written these laws and was pumping them out. What is it sort of like a smoking gun to see that video and see how operationalized it is? Or is this something you've known all along? So we've suspected this all along, but it, this is the smoking gun, right? We have seen the evidence of the of the gun. We saw the shootings. But now we know that there, is, that there is, in fact, out of Washington, D.C., a well-funded conservative effort to spread 
the big lie from a cultural and political phenomenon into the laws of state after state after state. Mark, what do you make of Liz Cheney breaking with her leadership ranks? They actually broke with her um, over the big lie. Uh, Joy Reid made the point that she believes so much in democracy. She sought to um, and championed efforts to export it overseas. Is she someone that you'd like to see involved in the fight to preserve our democracy here in the specific case of voting rights? Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, Liz Cheney deserves a lot of credit. Whatever else uh, people may disagree with her on, at a time when our nation was in peril, she stood up and she told the truth. And she has risked consequences to her career for telling the truth. And, you know, I, I, I tweeted about this and talked about this back uh, uh, on January 4th and January 5th. She issued one of the most thorough uh, statements about the the litigation in the post-election period and how the lie that Donald Trump was spreading and that so many of her colleagues were going to adopt on January 6th, um, she laid that out in really, really uh, clear detail. So she's been consistent on this and she deserves credit for that. And I hope she takes the next step, though, and now stands up also to the voter suppression efforts that we're seeing that are the result of that big lie. The insurrection is obviously a horror and a stain on our country. And the voter suppression laws stand to impact millions and millions and millions of Americans. I wonder if you feel like they're just racing through. I mean, there was the, the boycott after the law passed in Georgia. We had Beto O'Rourke on. I know they're, they're fighting the law in Texas. But it feels like with this cookie cutter policy process that now we know emanated from Washington, these laws are just racing through state legislatures. Is that is that a fair analysis? It is. Look, um, I wrote in the piece that you quoted, you know, you can be a free trade or a fair trade Republican and still have a home in the Republican Party. You can be in favor or against um, gov more government regulation and still be in the Republican Party. You could even, I think, be a pro-tax increase. Uh, Republican today. The only thing you can't be is in favor of voting rights and against the big lie. So when you have a party that is united by that one policy that that the election was stolen and we need to now for uh, restrict voting rights, it is no surprise that we're seeing in state after state these bad laws being passed and no surprise that there is a group like the Heritage, Fund, uh, Heritage Action Fund that is behind it. Um they denied that they're doing this, but this is, we found this on their website. So on Heritage's website, they have a section called Best Practices for Strengthening Electoral Systems, What States Should Do. I, I want to go through some of this. And, you know, they're trying to launder policies to make them sound reasonable when the whole premise is BS. So there is no voter fraud. So none of these laws are fixing anything because there's nothing to fix. But let's just take them through. What is verifying the accuracy of voter registration lists? Why do they want to do that? Well, so let's be clear. Federal law already requires the verification and accuracy of, of voter registration lists. That was a bipartisan bill passed uh, 30 years ago now. Uh, so what they are talking about is not verifying the accuracy of voter lists. They're talking about purging voter lists. Right. They're talking about going through and kicking off the voter list people who are eligible to vote. We just saw in Iowa after they passed their law, it's been reported that people uh, have been erroneously moved from active to inactive. So um, they're just talking about voter purges. Well, and in the Iowa law is interesting because they're taking off what they call infrequent voters. Those are people who vote every four years. Traditionally, it's been Republicans who vote in all those off years. All of the laws seem to specifically target a purge of people who come out and vote for Democratic choices, more or less, other than Republican. Are you surprised that there isn't more urgency from the White House and congressional leaders? Look, I think that the White House and Democrats in Congress are doing everything they can. The president spoke about it in his uh, a, a joint address to Congress. Uh, Senator Sh uh, Schumer uh, personally attended the Rules Committee markup on the For the People Act. Uh, 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 Speaker Pelosi moved it through the House as H.R. 1, it's S. 1 in the Senate. You know, the reality is that the Senate has the rules that the Senate has. And the question now is going to be whether or not it can advance in the face of what will be unanimous Republican opposition. And I hope it will. 
Let me just push a little more because I know you know this. Actually, you write this. Let, let me put it in your words first. While Democrats divide their attention between health care, the economy, and racial justice, Republicans are singularly focused on making voting even more difficult and spreading disinformation about our elections. Every day, the proponents of the big lie are speaking louder with more voices and influence on this topic than we are. That is true. And I will just add, the Republicans don't have a policy agenda that they're pushing. They don't put out talking points about an alternative COVID relief vision or an alternative, you know, comprehensive infrastructure vision. It's just a smaller one. It takes five minutes. You just lop off everything that is in a road or a bridge. So they don't have anything else. This is it. And this is ball game for them. There are a lot of things, but they know how to win elections. And they only win elections if they, if they do these things, if they require voter ID, limit absentee ballots, prevent vote trafficking, allow observers. I mean, they know how to win elections. It's everything that's on the heritage list, and it's everything that ra that's racing through legislature. So in a perfect world, if you didn't understand that Democrats are dealing with a lot of policies, what would you have them do? Look, I, I meant what I wrote, which is that the top priority for Democrats and progressives needs to be protecting voting rights. Um, and that that is our first that should be our first, second and third agenda item, because without the protection of the right to vote, nothing else will matter. And the Republicans, as you point out, this is their only thing. The only thing that they talk about, the only thing they that unites them is disenfranchising voters because they don't have any other way to win elections unless they disenfranchise voters. So it's urgently important that we on our side talk out about this, speak in the town square and 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 to our neighbors about it and to push back in every way we can. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.